What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tim Sports Talk. And today we got some breaking news. And we've been doing some things in free agency that I thought were fine. And then all of a sudden today happened, and I'm not on board with this, all right? A lot of other fans are upset we didn't sign Tim Settle or bring back J.D. McKissick. And yeah, I would have loved those guys back, but I was okay with letting them move on. It's a third down back. It's a fourth string defensive tackle. What's the big deal? We can replace Tim Settle. We can replace a running back. It's all good. But then, today, we get news that Washington Commanders are expected to release defensive tackle Matt Ioannidis. Now we've released our fourth string D tackle and our third string D tackle. Okay? And then on top of that, Adam Scheffner reports... Commanders have released offensive lineman Eric Flowers, our starting left guard last year, after we already lost our starting right guard in Brandon Sheriff to free agency, which is, again, it was Sheriff wanted too much money as a right guard. I didn't care to pay him all that. But Eric Flowers was not overly expensive. Like, what are we doing here? Let's just actually pull this up real quick over the cap. We go to teams, we go to Washington, because they're probably not off this list already. Eric Flowers was going to be a $10 million cap hit for a starting lineman. Fine. We could save all of that money, so we can save $10 million according to this. And then Matt Ioannidis was only supposed to be an $8.3 million cap hit. We can save just under $7 million. So we're saving $17 million, but then creating two holes. We now don't have a starting left guard. And Matt Ioannidis, well, yes, he was a third-string defensive tackle, but defensive linemen rotate. He played 60% of snaps last year. Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen only play 70-75%. So he plays almost as much as the starters. So now we just created two holes to create cap space for what? For what? Who are you going after that you need all this cap space for now. Like, what in the world is that? It makes no sense to cut these two players who Eric Flowers was solid last year at left guard. There was nothing wrong with him. And Matt Ioannidis is a tremendous third string defensive tackle. A lot of people would love him as their second, maybe even first. The guy's talented. So we just let go two talented and important pieces for this team for what? I mean, as Louis T. was said, I would put on all black like the Omen on for this one because I'm just so confused by this. People are like, oh, maybe they're going for a big free agent. Go get the free agent first and then cut to make room. Like, you don't know if you're getting Bobby Wagner or, you know, list other free agent, Allen Robinson. You don't know who you're going to be able to get in free agency. You sign them first, go into the negative, which is fine. You can be in the negative right now. It's not a big deal. You just can't be uh, later in the offseason, probably after July 15th or whatever it is. But you can figure it out, right? Like, I mean, right now there's, according to this, in the cap space, there's still five teams, no, four teams in the red right now. All right? Still four teams. So you could release those players... After you get that player or players, whoever you're going for in free agency. So you don't know if you're going to get either of these guys that you want. And then on top of that, you just created two more holes for your team. I, I, I'm i just beside myself on this one. It makes no sense. What happened to K cutting Landon Collins? Landon Collins doesn't have a spot on this team anymore. He's not a he's okay average linebacker. You're not paying an average linebacker $15 million cap hit, almost $16 million. You can save nearly $7 million by cutting him. You already have a strong safety in Cameron Curl. You need a free safety. Landon Collins ain't a free safety. So there's not even a reason to keep Landon Collins on this team. You already knew you were going to draft linebackers or sign a linebacker and free agency anyway. And then also you're probably going to draft a safety. You just re-signed Bobby McCain. Why do you need Landon Collins now on this defense already? And then instead, now you created two other holes. Landon Collins is not even a hole. We don't need him. 
He gives nothing to us. He's a waste of space. I'm just... this These two moves right here put me on the camp of what in the world are we doing in this free agency? As I said, I was fine with Tim Settle. I was fine with JD because I was fine with Brandon Sheriff. I didn't care about those. Like, I wanted... As I said, I wanted Tim Settle and I wanted JD. If we somehow made those work, I would not have been mad. But the fact that we let him go, that's fine. But these two, now what are you going to do in the draft? Now are you going to draft Tyler Linderbaum or a tackle in the draft and move them to guard? Like, is that really the goal now? Is to go waste a first round pick on an offensive lineman? When you, you had those holes filled and you could have used that to fill your middle linebacker or use it to fill in your second receiver that could be a great weapon for Carson Wentz or is fill in a cornerback where our corners played like dog crap last year. You could go get Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley, uh, a falling Kayvon Thibodeau with another rotational defensive end. You could then trade Montez Sweat if you wanted. Like, you had options here and now you're just creating more as far as what in the world are you trying to do? You're creating holes where there doesn't need to be a hole. And that's frustrating. You know, we've been building to this moment. Ron Rivera's been talking about, we've been building this team. We're building it around it, and then we're going to get our quarterback, and then we're going to win. You've been building this team. The team has... The team went 7-10 and 10 last year with Taylor Heineke, a COVID game, so many injuries, and we still found a way to get seven wins out of that team, miss, losing our starting quarterback game one, right? Now we have Carson Wentz, a legit six foot five, 240-pound, strong-arm quarterback that can move, that can sling it downfield, that has been in the league, a veteran. That's the quarterback you wanted to build towards. And now you get the quarterback and you're starting to let pieces go? Well, it makes no sense. Makes no sense. So now I don't know where we're going in this draft. I thought we were going to get a linebacker and a receiver in the first two rounds, maybe a corner and a receiver, and then fill in a couple of gap holes, use some free agency money, and maybe get a a middle linebacker like we talked about, whether that be a uh, Jared Davis from the Jets or somebody cheaper, just fill in the hole, fill in the needs, stop gap it, as Jairus was saying. But now I am beyond confused on what we are going to accomplish here. But you guys let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Also in the description below, there's a Discord link. Hop in our Discord and come talk some football. And also, that we are doing a March Madness tournament. If you haven't already... Go into the link below. It's the top link. The password's in there as well. Join it. You can win 100 bucks. It's free to enter. And you can win the first Tim Sports Talk merch. So, hey, if you're a brand new subscriber, if you're a longtime subscriber, if you create a bracket, you have just as good a chance as anyone to win it. And you can win 100 bucks as well. So, hey, join. It's free. Let's have some fun. There's like 25 brackets in there right now. You can create multiple brackets if you want. But, hey, thank you for watching until the end. And until next time. Sir!